Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 62 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about ASP.NET session state. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 59, 60 and 61 of this video series. In ASP.NET, there are different techniques to send data from one web form to another. In the previous sessions of this video series, we have discussed about cross-page postback, context.handler object, query strings and cookies. In this session, we'll discuss about session state variables. Just like query strings, session state variables can also be used to send data from one web form to another. Let's look at an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. I have an ASP.NET web application project here with two web forms. On web form 1, I have two text box controls where the user can enter their name and email. And once they click on this button, go to web form 2, user will be navigated to web form 2.aspx. And on this web form, we have two label controls. And these label controls will display the name and email that we have entered on this web form 1. Let's see how to do that using session state variables. I double click this button control to generate the event handler and retrieve the name from the text box txt name and then I want to store this within a session variable so to create a session variable I use the session object and then use a key I'm going to use a key called name to store the name into a session okay along the same lines to store the email I'm going to use a key as email and email is present in a text box called txt email okay so we have stored the name and email in session variables now we want to redirect the user to webform 2.aspx so response.redirect let's send the user to you know within the root directory of the application I have a web form called webform 2.aspx so let's navigate the user to that web form all right. So once the user lands on webform 2.aspx, the page load gets the page load event gets executed. On the page load event, we want to retrieve the name and email from the session and display them in the label controls. To display the name, I have a label called LBL name. So the text of this label control is equal to I need to retrieve the name from uh, the session variable to retrieve the value I again use the same key and look at this the key name if you remember its name and the important thing to note here is that you know a session variable can be used to store any type of object it can be integer it can be string it can be anything it can even be a complex object like customer employee etc okay that's why its return type is an object but we know name is a string so it's safe to convert that to string and to do that I'm using the two string method along the same lines retrieve the email the key the key for the email is email and I want to display that in a label called LBL email that's all we are done okay so now let's see let me run this. So on web form 1 we are storing uh, uh, name and email into the session variables and on web form 2 we are retrieving that name and email from the session and displaying them. Let me enter the name as test and email as email test. Click on go to web form 2. On web form 2 we are displaying them. Okay, so we have just seen how to use session state variables to send data from one web form to another. But whenever we use session state variable there are some important points to keep in mind. Uh, session state variables are stored on the web server by default and are kept for the lifetime of the session. So where are the session state variables stored? They are stored on the web server memory. And how long are they stored on the web server memory? They are kept for the lifetime of a session. So how do we control the lifetime of a session? The lifetime of a session is controlled by an attribute called timeout that we set in the session state element. Let's see how to do that. So every web application project has a, got a configuration file called web.config file. Within web.config, under configuration, under system.web element, we can have a session state element. And then session state has got a mode attribute, which is very important. And in fact, this is one of the very common interview question as well. We'll talk about the different session state modes in a later video session. But for now, understand, you know, I'm going to use the mode as in proc. And if we don't specify the session state mode, the default is in proc, meaning the session state variables will be stored on the web server memory okay and then so how long will these session state variables be stored on the web server memory you know at some point they have to be destroyed 
otherwise at some point of time you know the web server will run out of memory so what is the time limit when the session variables will be destroyed that is dependent on this attribute called timeout again if I don't specify this timeout attribute the default is 20 minutes but depending on our application requirement we can configure that so I'm going to set this to the default value which is 20 minutes so this is configurable here within our web dot uh, config file okay the default session mode is in proc we have just seen that and we'll discuss about the different session state modes in a later video session the lifetime of a session is determined by the timeout value in web.config file the default is 20 minutes the timeout value can be adjusted according to your application requirements session state variables are available across all pages but only for a given single session let's understand this point first session state variables are available across all pages so what do we mean by that if you remember on webform1.aspx we are storing the name and email in these session state variables now and we are retrieving the values on webform2.aspx now let's say if i have webform3 webform4 webform5 or webform500.aspx on all these you know web forms these session state variables are accessible you can access them and display them okay but then they are available only for a given single session which means session variables are like single user global data now if this point is a little confusing what we mean by a given single session or session variables are like single user global data don't worry we are going to talk about those points in detail in the next session when we talk about cookie less sessions okay so let's go to the next point now it's always a good practice to check if a session state variable is null before calling any of its methods such as to string otherwise we may run into runtime null reference exceptions let's understand what we mean by this if you look at this application as how it stands now on the on webform2.aspx where we are reading the session variable we are directly reading it from the session now we know that this session state elements has got a time limit on them 20 minutes okay by default now let's say if the 20 minutes has passed and I'm trying to access this webform.aspx or you know I haven't come you know to webform1.aspx I'm going directly to webform2.aspx in which case the session variable will be null and on null object you're calling a two string method so what's the result you get a null reference exception so let me run this directly and see what's gonna happen now look at that object reference not set to an instance of an object system dot null reference exception and that makes sense because there's nothing in that session variable you're calling the two string method so two string on a null object will cause null reference exception so let's see how to get rid of this that's why whenever you're trying to retrieve something out of the session it is always good to check if that session variable is not null before kind of doing any conversion so if session of name is not equal to null only then try to retrieve this and along the same lines if session of email is not equal to null only then try to retrieve email out of the session convert that to string and assign that to label so now if I go to this web form directly I wouldn't get any you know uh, runtime exception and that's because we're actually checking if it's not null only then try to execute this otherwise this code will not be executed the labels will be displayed empty all right application performance can be improved by disabling session state obviously because you know these session state variables are going to consume the web server memory um, so obviously disabling session state can improve the performance of your application so if your application doesn't require session state then disable it disabling session state can be done at two levels we can disable that at a web form level or if you want to disable it for the entire application we can do that at the application level in web.config file so if I want to disable it at the web form level in the page directive of the web form in the HTML source in the page directive I can set enable session state is equal to false so what does that mean we are disabling the session state for this web form maybe for the, the other web forms use the session state okay and if I want to disable that at the application level look at this at, at the moment I have disabled session state at the web form level so if we run this now and if you remember 
this web form is actually using session state it's using um, you know the session variables to store data into that okay so obviously now if I try to enter something into this and then click go to web form 2 as you might expect we get an error because you have disabled session state and you're trying to use the session variable and what does it say session state can only be used when enable session state is set to true okay so since we disable the session state we get that error so let's set that back to true and then on web form 2 similarly if you want to disable it for web form 2 you can do that as well but then remember this enable session state has also got you know whether you want to enable it true otherwise false otherwise you can set it to read only if you look at web form 2 dot ASPX we are only reading the session state variables so it's okay to set it as read only because we are not modifying the value okay and if I want to disable it at, at the application level I can set the session state mode to off which means at the entire application level we are disabling session state okay but if your application requires session state to be used then go ahead and use it but if it's not using uh, if your application is not making use of session state then there's no point in having it enable just to improve the performance of the application disable session state on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day